Good afternoon, everyone. We come together on this 23rd Thursday in Ordinary Time, where our God continues to do extraordinary things. We come together in the mind of this mountaintop experience to be able to celebrate who we are and whose we are. We come together to give God glory, honor, and praise, both physically and spiritually, as you pray with us via live stream, and we are in the church. Our interest antiphon for this day, love your enemies, says the Lord. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Our mass is being offered this evening for the special intentions of Yvonne Smith, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Savior, Jesus the Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, may it be with you all. My sisters and brothers, both physically in the church and those on the mountaintop, spiritually with us live stream, we come together to celebrate in the midst of our oppression, all the good things that our God has, will, and is doing right now for us. Let's take a moment to remember the times we lost sight of all those things that led us to sin, so that then we can ask our gracious and merciful God for his pardon and strength. You have sent up those with sorrowful hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call all who've done wrong. Christ, have mercy. You came into time to create a pathway between heaven and earth to remove all obstacles so that we could follow you. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let all God's people say, Amen. Now let us pray, let every head be bowed and every eye closed as we communicate with our God. O oh God, who have laid down your precept of charity, that we should sincerely love those who afflict us, grant that we may follow the commands of the new law, striving to return good for evil, and bearing one another's burdens through our Lord Jesus, the Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let all God's people say, Amen. Now let's be seated for the reading of God's Word. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, knowledge inflates with pride, but love builds up. If anyone supposes he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if one loves God, one is known by him. So about the eating of the meat and sacrifice to idols, we know that there is no idol in the world and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there are so-called gods in heaven and on earth, there are, but to be sure, many gods and many lords. Yet for us, there is one God, the Father, from whom all things are and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things are and through whom we exist. 
but not all have this knowledge. There are some who have been so used to idolatry up until now that when they eat meat sacrificed to idols, their conscience, which is weak and def is defiled, Thus, through your knowledge, the weak person is brought to destruction. The brother for whom Christ died. When you sin in this way against your brothers and wound their conscience, weak as they are, you are sinning against Christ. Therefore, if food causes my brother to sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I may not cause my brother to sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Guide me, Lord, Lord along, along the, the everlasting, everlasting way. way. O oh Lord, you have probed me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar, my journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. Guide, Guide me, Lord, along, along the, the everlasting, everlasting way. way. Truly, you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fear, fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Guide me, Lord, Lord along, along the everlasting, everlasting way. way. Probe me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if my way is crooked, and lead me in the way of old. Guide Thank me, you, Lord, Lord, along, along the, the everlasting, everlasting way. way. With your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as also your Father is merciful. 
Stop judging and you will not be judged. Stop condemning and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I really like this pericope, Luke's Gospel. I'm going to take this off so I can speak a little freer. I'm sure you can understand me. Uh, if you can understand me, say amen, but it's a little cumbersome trying to talk with it on. Which I should have kept on so I could remain being brief, amen. But I like this pericope, Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 27 through 38, because it's a lot of things going on, but it's powerful, especially the, uh, the verse where it says, uh, if you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? So in other words, I want to borrow $100 from everyone on uh, watching uh, and praying with this live stream and those in the church. Break me off, but don't expect to get paid back. I know you type psych on your, in your screens. Of course, that could never happen. It wanted a little levity. And I was thinking about this pericope in this extraordinarily uh, tumultuous time in our, in this nation's and the world as we continue to deal with this pandemic called COVID-19. And you know, we talk about the physical things that are going on. Over 192,000 people have died just from the United States of America. We talk about uh, that physical, physical aspect of it. We also can talk about the fact that over two, 0.3 million people have been infected that we know of because we know there's more that we do not know of because of the improper testing. But remember on Sunday we talked about the ripple effect, the ripple effect of our sinfulness, the ripple effect of, you know, it might seem small to us, but it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And I can't help but look at the scripture and think about the divider in chief, how he tells his little lies. And uh, as most of you have been hearing, because another book is coming out saying that he's a liar, but we don't need books to tell us that. We can hear it with our own ears. But reminding us that, yes, he really did. And he's admitted on tape that he lied about the fact that this pandemic, this little lie he told, uh, was going to grow is so big. Remember, it was only going to be 15 people. And when he told that lie, that little lie, he already knew that, they, that he was being warned by his own administration that this would be, could lead to a pandemic in our country. But because he said he lied because he wanted to make sure he made it easy for you, made it easy for me, so we wouldn't panic. How, I can, how you can tell he's lying besides that his lips are moving is the fact that if, you, if he really cared about not causing a panic, why would he have the commercials that you've been inundated with talking about, and every time he gets a microphone, talking about those scary black people who are gonna be moving to the suburbs and destroying the suburban housewives way of life. You don't want to cause panic, but you tell armed militia of your supporter to go take over a state capitol in Michigan, spitting all kind of virus and the police officers' faces. But the police officers can remain calm when they deal with white folks hollering and screaming at them for to, to go against a democratic governor. 
Oh, Father, no, you know, you can't go hard as daily mass. Yeah, oh, you don't say any, uh, uh, oh, so he says he doesn't want to cause a, a panic when he sends a militia in where it gets a crazed 17-year-old boy to carry a gun into a city, a small town, supposedly protect buildings, and then kill two, three white people. They were white people, the two that died. And say, oh, well, they were just, he was just defending himself against anarchists. The devil's a liar. He said, Father, what does that have to do with us in the pericope? For us today, really quickly, I just want us to focus on two, uh, on verse 27 of the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Luke. To you who hear, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Now, I don't know about you, but that's real hard when I think about the divider in chief, and not just him, but I think about a whole lot of others. Especially in this time where we talk about black lives matters. If black lives truly matter, then we recognize that we are called to love everybody. And they say, well, Father, all lives matters. The devil is a liar. Until black lives matters, all lives do not matter. And it's up to us to testify to that fact and bring this truth to the marketplace, bring this truth to the church, bring this truth to your job, bring this truth to wherever you go. Because there is one, the divider in chief, who says, I don't want to create animosity, but tries to pretend like Black Lives Matters, the movement is anti-American and making them enemies of the state. That's what I want us to focus on, being enemies of the state. Because if we are enemies of the state, for standing up for truth, justice, and the American way where all women and men are created equal and called to be treated fairly, if we're enemies of the state where we're called to be witnesses of who we are to make sure that all children are protected and not put in harm's way of a pandemic just so you can say that you can make money, if we're enemies of the state to say that I don't care if they come out with a vaccine in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be leery of it because I know you have lied before, you're lying during, and you'll lie again through this pandemic. If I'm an enemy of the state because I say that black lives matters and that we are all called to rise up, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Native American or whatever color you may be to testify to that fact, if that makes me an enemy of the state, then the scripture says you're called to love me, your enemy. Do good to those who hate you. That's why I pray for the divider in chief every day. Honestly pray because I'm not going to allow his hate to change me. I'm not going to allow those Republicans, and I'm naming Republicans, and those Democrats who support hate change me because I know who I am and whose I am. And though you might want to curse me by making sure when I say me, to proverbial me, that you don't care if we have decent health care, you don't care if we have a good education, you don't care if our towns are burning because of wildfires or because of a fire that you say that someone, a protester began, but we're finding out more and more that it's uh, people who have infiltrated, who actually hate the protesters, who are starting the fires to make it look like it's a Black Lives Matters thing, but it's nothing more than a hate thing. If you want to curse anyone who wants to stand up for justice, for charity, and for the fact that our Christian value tells us, I don't care if you're Catholic, Baptist, Episcopalian, or whatever denomination, our Christian value calls us to love everybody. Luke's Gospel 627 says those who hate you, those who curse you, those who talk about you, those who tear you down. So in your churches around the country, 
in the physical building or the body of Christ, when we're talking about sisters and brothers, we are following the mantra of hate, not following the mantra of love, which calls us to bless those who we want to curse, to bless those we can't stand, to bless those who get on our nerves, to bless those who wear us down, to bless them. How can we do that? Why should we do that? The divider chief says, you're a sucker if you do that. Well, I say you're a sucker if you don't, because you know who rules the world. It's not Donald Trump, it's Jesus the Christ. And Jesus the Christ showed you what he did for those who hated him. He left his throne of grace. It became like us in all things except sin. Why? So he could die for those who loved him and those who do not. So he could die for those who care about him and those who would kill him. Wow, that's some love for you, isn't it? Jesus was an enemy of the state. And you saw he loved even more. So Black Lives Matter protesters, sympathizers, agreeers, if you're an enemy of the state, Rejoice and be glad because you mirror Jesus the Christ. It's our job to continue to bless those who curse us. And the last part of verse 27 of the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Luke says, pray for those who mistreat you. You see, we know prayer changes things. And I pray honestly for the conversion of the divider in chief. I pray that November 3rd is a quick victory for justice for all. I pray that he'll be taken out of the White House in handcuffs come June, July, I mean, excuse me, come January 20th, if not before. I pray not just because it would be embarrassing to him, but because that's, I think, the magnitude of what he will need for full conversion, because he doesn't seem to get it. And he thinks that we who stand up for America are enemies of the state, and he is an enemy of the state as he continues to tear the country apart. You see, he's cared with our military, with our poor, with those of African descent, with those Hispanics, those of Asian descent, those who were here before him, the Native American. We're called to bless those people, those who are hated by our society. We're called to bless our European and American sisters and brothers who by their actions are enemies of the state of this country living up to our Christian principles. As we continue our celebration of this Mass and continue our journey, let's ask God to give us the wisdom that we are called to bless those who hate us, to pray for those who don't like us, who mistreat us. And if we do this, we won't be doing anything special. We'll only be living up to our name, Christian. That means like Christ. And that means that we will do that and we will see a conversion. We've seen it before. We've talked about it. Look at George Wallace, who I think the divider in chief has emulated. Well, I know he's taken George Wallace to the next level. But remember, George Wallace said, segregation today, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. And lived and honestly believed it. But after somebody prayed for him, after years of perseverance uh, of being treated uh, of being treated nicely by us in spite of his hate George Wallace had a conversion and when he died in a wheelchair broken and sick when he died his only good friend for a number of years was a black man that he wrote about and cared deeply that black man who I someday will learn his name has got to be a saint He's lived up to the model that Jesus the Christ has given us, a model of loving your neighbor, even those who mistreat and hate you. 
Because if you do, their conversion will make you even greater. And so George Wallace has been saved, but that unnamed black man is like the unnamed saints who've gone before us has a special seat in heaven. Let us be called enemies of the state if we're standing up for the gospel so that we can continue to build up God's kingdom by being a witness through our prayer and action that all lives matter because we show black lives matter by our very being. And someday, we'll be the unnamed saints that have transformed the heart of the divider in chief, the heart of those sycophant Republicans that continue to not to take care of the people and trust in their care, and change the hearts and minds of those who can vote for hate over hope by our witness, by our prayers, by our being called the enemy of the state, transform them to see that we are patriots of the state, the state of America, or the state of Christianity, the state of the gospel being shared and transforming this dark world into Christ's awesome, wonderful light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We have been given this wonderful gift of faith that gives us the opportunity to be enemies of the state of those who would go against the gospel. But as enemies of the state, being able to share our prayers and petitions to our loving God. We do so now with the expectation that our prayers will be heard and granted. We pray first for our church, the body of Christ with Jesus as our head that we who make up this wondrous body will answer our call to be true patriots of the state that may lead some to think we're enemy of the state because we stand up for the gospel of life from the beginning of life to the end naturally and in doing so transform our Christian nation to live up to our principles to show that not only black lives matters but because they matter all lives matters and transform this dark world in Christ's awesome light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our civic leaders. In a special way, we pray for President Trump, Governor Edwards, Mayor Cantrell, Congress, and all elected officials, that through our selfless prayers and our actions, that they will see that we're not enemies of the state, and they're called to serve all those who agree with them and those who disagree with them. This will mean they will have to look beyond their racist rhetoric, their partisan politics, their prejudice, the desire for power, greed, and everything that seems to continue to inhibit them from serving the common good with a special outreach to those who are less fortunate. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for all of our sick, those on our parish sick list, those in our various religious communities who are ill, especially those who are listed on our COVID-19 sick list, that remember in a special way in this Eucharist, all those who are ill during this pandemic that we do not yet know of, that through our selfless, heal, heal, our selfless prayers and our active work, that they will receive a divine healing and be a witness to our universal sisterhood and brotherhood let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the intentions of each one gathered here, both those praying with us now live stream, those here in our church, those who will pray watching through YouTube tomorrow or later on tonight, that all these prayers that, die, that lie deep in the recesses of our hearts will be heard and granted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for an increase of vocations to, to the religious life and to, to the priesthood, that women and men from our community will answer our awesome call to these special vocations that will seemingly create them to be, if they answer the call, enemies of the state, but actually promoters of the gospel. In a special way, we remember Deacon and Johnny Gibson and Mr. Avery Daniels, that they will continue to journey quickly to God's altar, to these special vocations they've been called to, and the women and men who struggle 
because of outward obstacles, those obstacles will be removed by our prayers and actions so they will be able to serve in these special vocations and continue to promote and share the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And we pray for all those who have died. In a special way, remember Marigold Hardesty, for whom this Mass is being offered. The special intention for Deaconess Yvonne Smith, and for all those prayers that need a special intention right now, by your grace, that these prayers and those who have gone before us will receive the gift of eternal life and assist us someday to do the same. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And I'm gathering all our prayers and petition to one. Let's include our prayer for an end to violence, murder, and racism. Our family pray together, loving and faithful God. Through the years, the people of our archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of Our Lady of Palm Succor. which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord, Our Lady of Palm Succor, hasten to help us. Mother Henriette DeLille, pray for us that we may be a holy family. Let all God's people say, Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Food of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. The fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Humble spirit, contrary hearts, may we be sent by you, O Lord, as we can. Lord, wash your bread, take my chain, and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours that they may be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church.
in our longing to be at peace with everyone, O Lord. We offer you this sacrifice for those who are against us, and we commemorate the death of your Son, through which, while still enemies, we have been reconciled to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him which great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus the Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Archbishop, and all the religious and clergy. Remember your servant, Marigold Hardesty, for whom this Mass is being offered. Remember also our special intention for Deacon Yvonne Smith, Remember also our sisters and brothers who died during this pandemic. Also remember all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our Mother by adoption, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. 
As we pray for our oppressors, we follow the Savior's command. As we are formed by his divine teaching, and now as one faith family, dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Church, behold, the enemy of the state, but the promoter of the gospel. Behold, this is Jesus who created the state, who calls us to love those who call us enemy of the state, as he loved those who miscalled him the same. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. A communion and to font. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who persecuted, who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Church, the body of Christ. Amen.
by your praying with us in this Mass live stream. We have participated and received spiritual communion. But as we continue to pray during this pandemic time in a special way for those moments of spiritual communion, we'll use the prayer that St. Alphonsus Liguori gives us to show us our spiritual connectedness as we have the spiritual communion that we pray for. Our spiritual communion prayer together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let all God's people say, now let us pray, let every head be bowed and every eye closed as we continue our prayer. Through these mysteries of our peace, grant, O oh God, that we may live in harmony with all and bring those who are against us to find favor with you and be reconciled to us. Through Christ our Lord, let all God's people say, Amen. Now, of course, I would not be a pastor if I would not ask you to give in where you fit in. We have our three ways of giving, of course. Those who are giving online through GiveLify, I ask if possible you can throw a couple more dollars onto that fire so we can continue to build up this ministry. Uh, we also can give through our mail, our mail in giving, 2916 Paris Avenue. New Orleans, Louisiana, 70119. And of course, if you're in the New Orleans area and you want to come to drop off your envelope in the, at the rectory, 2916, the top of the steps to the left, the mail slot to your left, so that we can continue to build up God's kingdom. I thank you in advance for your gener generosity, for your time, talent, and the treasure, the time praying with us, the talent also praying and keeping us alive by sharing, sharing who we are and whose we are. We're on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, website, and YouTube. <laughs> Having seen your moment, amen, and YouTube. And if you can like us on all of those, make sure you share us so we can continue uh, to build up this great ministry we have. Now, before the final blessing, I want to take the opportunity to thank in a special way our lector, Mrs. Sinead Washington. And we want to thank uh, Dream Forward under the direction of Mrs. Sinead Washington and Kai for being with us this, this day and assist us in a special outreach where we can reach all of you. Uh, Miss Marlene is not here because we, I needed her to do something special for me right now in the office. So uh, we thank Ms. Sh Ms. Uh, Sinead for filling in as our lector. And we know we, we miss Ms. Marlene, but you did a, a great job. And we'll bring her, we'll bring her back next week. <laughs> but if not, be ready. We'll call on you again. Amen. I want to thank all of you, the VICs, the very important Christians, as each and every one of us, one of you for being here, because if one of you would not have been here, the body of Christ would have been incomplete. We'll come together again on Sunday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, I ask you to continue to share the good news, to build up God's kingdom, to build up this ministry, to pray for us here at St. Raymond and St. Leo the Great uh, physically as we pray for all of you around the country and around the world because of this great gift, this ministry. Also, I want to give a special plug to my podcast, Turned Up on the Word. I have new episodes up and ready for you to watch. Pray with me as we continue to break open the Word, dealing with our modern day issues, and continue to see where God is calling us to respond and really get lit, turned up on God's Word. We'll, we'll pray, stay tuned, stay prayerful, and stay safe. We'll see you again on Sunday morning. The Lord be with you. I may Almighty God continue to bless us all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us now go in peace to love the serve and serve the Lord and serve one another. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed evening and a great day tomorrow.
St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And through thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>